welcome to step number two, which is save for your down payment. Now, don't get me wrong. You can simultaneously be working on step number one, building and or fixing your credit while you are saving for your down payment. These two steps, they go together like, like Thelma and Louise, Tom and Jerry, like a fresh scoop of ice cream deliciously nestled on top of a warm chocolate chip cookie. Mm. So what is a down payment exactly? Your down payment is the initial portion of cash money that you are contributing to the deal. It is calculated as a percentage of the total purchase price of the home. So if you're buying a million dollar home and you have decided that you would like to save up for a 20% down payment, then you would need to save $200,000. Easy enough, right? But how much do we need to put down? Is it the infamous 20%? Can we put down five, 10, 15, 30? What is it? Tell me! How much you are required to put down is entirely dependent on which type of loan you receive. We'll take an in-depth look at the various types of loans in another video, hint, hint. But for now, here's the quick rundown. If you are a veteran, you can get what is called a VA loan, a Veterans Affairs loan, and you can put down as little as 0% a small token of Murica's appreciation for your service. If you're getting an FHA loan, you can put down as little as three and a half percent. If you're getting a conventional loan, you can put down as little as 5%, unless you are a first time buyer, in which case you can put down as little as 3%. If you are purchasing an investment property that will not be your primary residence, you will be required to put down 20 to 25%. Sometimes you'll be able to put down as little as 15%, but but in most cases, it's generally 20 to 25%. But still, how much should we put down? What are the pros and cons of putting down more or less? Think about it like this. The lender views your down payment as proof, as evidence that you are invested in the purchase of this home and that you are invested in making all of your mortgage payments. The more you put down, the more invested you are. The less you put down, the less committed you will be perceived in the eyes of the lender. Much like the guy who wants to go have on a first date at Starbucks. Something to note is that if you put anything less than 20% down, you will have to pay what is called private mortgage insurance, AKA PMI. This is not to be confused with homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance protects you in the case of an unforeseen event, like a flood, tornado, tsunami, earthquake, alien invasion. I like movies. Private mortgage insurance doesn't protect you, it protects the lender. The less you put down, the more of a risk it is for the lender, so they tack on this extra cost of PMI to lessen the blow in the event that you default on your mortgage. PMI typically costs 0.5% to 1% of the total loan amount. Not the purchase price of the home, but the amount that you are borrowing. Let's put that into perspective. Let's say you're buying a million dollar home, you put down 5%, $50,000, you are borrowing $950 thousand dollars from the lender. So let's multiply that by 0.5 to 1%. And now we have a range of $4,750 to $9,500. Divide that by 12 months. And each month you will be paying about $396 to $792. 10% down, $375 to $750 per month. 15% down, about $354. To $708. This is what you would be paying for your first year, but PMI is recalculated each and every year. So since your PMI is calculated as a percentage of your loan balance, each and every time you pay your mortgage, your loan balance goes down. And so each and every year, your PMI will too. Now, while this extra cost that PMI oh so generously delivers can be seen as a negative thing, gaining leverage of a property can be far more positive. Your home might appreciate in value. Let's just say in year one, your million dollar home appreciated in value by our 40 year average of 6.77%. In year one, your home will have appreciated in value by $67,700. Owning a home also allows you to gain a hedge against inflation. You are also allowed to write your mortgage interest off on your taxes each year. Not to mention when you're renting, you're just throwing money away into the ether that you can never get back. With all this being said, PMI is still something to take into consideration when weighing out the pros and the cons of how much or how little to put down for your down payment. Something else to consider when determining how much you would like to save up for your down payment. As we've mentioned, a higher down payment 
payment is very attractive in the eyes of the lender, but it's also very attractive to the seller. As an example, we have three buyers. They're all interested in the same house. They're all going to make an offer. Buyer number one is going to put down 10%. Buyer number two is going to put down 15%. And buyer number three is going to put down 25%. Well, assuming all offers are the same, terms and all, buyer number three is most certainly going to take the cake. If you're running from a lion in the jungle, you don't have to be faster than the lion. You just have to be faster than the people running with you. All right, so now we know everything there is to know about your down payment, the pros and cons of putting down more or less. So is that everything we need to save up for? Nope. Closing costs. Closing costs are about 2% of the purchase price of the home. You will have to pay title, escrow, various individuals to take care of the paperwork and all of the things. Inspections. You will be hiring various professionals to inspect the condition of your home. The cost for inspections will depend entirely on the size of your house, the amenities of your house. If you don't have a pool, you don't need a pool inspection. If you're on the side of a cliff, you might want to get a G inspection. If you're purchasing a mega mansion, this will take much longer for the inspectors to inspect the condition of your home. So the cost for these inspections will be a lot more than inspections on a home that is a thousand square feet. After you meet with an agent and you discuss the size of the home that you are looking for and the amenities of interest to you, your agent will be able to give you a rough estimate as to how much inspections will run you. How much are the repairs? Do you plan on finding a home that is in need of a little bit of love and you're going to force the appreciation by adding a little sweat equity? Are you going to do it yourself or are you going to hire a contractor? Keep in mind, if you receive any quotes for repairs or necessary work that needs to be done, it's always a good idea to estimate about 15 to 20 percent more than what you were quoted because it is rarely, if ever, what they say it's going to be. Moving costs. Are you going to hire a moving company? Are you going to do it yourself? How much is a U-Haul? Are you planning to convince your friends to help you move? agreeing to pay them with pizza and beer? Well, currently a big dinner box at Pizza Hut is $24.99 and a 24 pack of Modelo is $26.99. But to be honest, here in Los Angeles, asking your friends to help you move and agreeing to pay them with pizza and beer is much like asking them to take you to LAX in the middle of five o'clock traffic. Just kidding. All right, we have made it through step number two. We are making progress. We know all about down payments, the pros and cons of putting down more or less. We know all about PMI, closing costs, inspections, moving costs, saving up for potential repairs. And we know how much it costs for a big dinner box at Pizza Hut and a 24 pack of Modelo. We've come a long way in just a short amount of time. So give yourselves a pat on the back and go enjoy yourself a nice fresh scoop of ice cream on top of a warm chocolate chip cookie. We meet begin at step number three.